Okay, um, we're gonna let me get going. Sorry about that. Just trying to make sure that we got the uh, recording going. Um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, again, my name is Wayne Welk, automation specialist um, with the Reynolds company, New Orleans. Uh, we got a great turnout in the room and online too. So uh, thanks for joining us on our first user group of 2019. Uh, we were joking earlier was last year at this time. It was the the great ice storm and um, of course. Uh, Today we're having the polar vortex, but uh, luckily not down here. Um, so our, our topic today is Garlink technology, and I, we're going to introduce that and uh, our speaker in just a second. Um, but as, as we typically do, we go through some of our uh, upcoming events and kind of uh, promote what's happening over the next few months. So um, user groups, we, we got the uh, at least the next three months set pretty pretty much in stone, and uh, come in May we'll, we'll determine that topic as we go a little further down the road. Uh, February is, um, so next month will be February 20th. We're gonna talk about thin clients and thin manager version 11. So that's gonna be a, a nice update. Uh, Mike Smoltz with uh, thin manager will make that presentation for us. In March, uh, Studio 5000 version 32 update and Logix update. So there's, a, there's gonna be some new Logix stuff coming out over the next two months. Uh, ver version 32 is actually out today, but we'll give you a little update on what 32 is all about and then some of the, the, what's happening in the Logix family. That's a good time for that update. And then in April is SIP security. So that's a, um, um, a security, Ethernet IP security between uh, controllers and devices in Rockwell world. And there's a new product coming out too that kind of ties in with that. Uh, uh, the, uh, the EN4TR um, uh, Ethernet card for the control Logix. So um, we'll, we'll present what SIP security is all about in April. And uh, just a reminder on the side, there is our, a screenshot of our automation blog. So the whole schedule is available at um, underneath um, the user group uh, menu banner at the top, uh, 2019 schedule. Also um, right there on the, um, on the column on the right is a, an archive, a link to the archive for all of our New Orleans as well as our Houston user group sessions. So we've actually put our Houston sessions up there too. They're starting the live stream as well. So their topics are a little different from ours. So as you look at that schedule, you might see a, a Houston topic that, that is interest, of interest to you. You're more than welcome to join their sessions online. Or if you want to travel to Houston, I'm sure they'll be happy to take you there too. Um, also, we have some other events coming up, larger events, um, both local and national. Of course, national, or those are the typical ones, uh, Tech Ed in June. And automation fair, of course, in Chicago. That's a ways off, but always good to know where it's at and when it's coming. But locally, we're going to have a couple of um, things um, here in the first, you know, first half of the year. Um, so just like we're doing the user group next month on Thin Manager and um, Thin Clients, that's a one-hour lunch and learn like we're doing today. If you're looking for a deeper dive on Thin Manager, there will be a one-day training course right here in this room. And it's going to be in March. So there's going to be three days. Each one's a single day. So you only got to choose one day. So 19th, 20th, and 21st. Um, that'll be hands-on with Thin Manager. Um, so it's a great opportunity to kind of learn what, what the, that's all about. And Thin Clients and how do you implement Thin Clients and Thin Manager in your, in your application. Um, that's, they say it's kind of geared for system integrators. And you'll, be, you'll get a certification at the end that kind of says you're a certified kind of Thin Manager integrator. But it's 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 well suited for end users as well because a lot of end users are making a switch to thin clients and it gives you that opportunity to to, um, to experience what what it is. And then, kind of in line with what we're doing today, today's a machine safety topic with GuardLink. Uh, we do intend to have a a larger machine safety type seminar towards the uh, in the springtime, April May time frame. We have to get this together still. But um, so today was kind of a one step in that process, we want to kind of help introduce some machine safety topics out there, GuardLink being you know, today's focus. But we're gonna do something a little bigger on the whole machine safety concept in general. So this will be a great event. And then later in the year, uh, a cybersecurity seminar, kind of similar, well, again, we have the SIP security coming out. So, so we wanna do something around the cybersecurity space because we know that's, that's huge as well. Um, so, we will introduce uh, Saurabh Banerjee. Uh, Saurabh uh, um, actually spoke for us several months ago, I guess back in the summer when you first came on board in the components area manager role. So we're, we're fortunate to have Saurabh back again today. 
to uh, present on our uh, garlic topic. So with that, I'm gonna let um, Srab introduce himself and I'll switch the presentations. All right. Thanks, Wayne. Can everybody hear me um, online? Let me make sure. Okay, cool. So hi everyone, my name is Saurabh Banerjee. I'm the uh, area manager for components and smart devices um, based out of Houston, but I cover this territory as well. Um, so thank you once again for your time. Today, uh, what we're gonna go into is just a little bit uh, deep dive on our new technology, which is called the Guard Link technology. It's a Rockwell proprietary technology that enables uh, devices that are at your machine level to be recognized and, uh, and known at the higher, um, higher connected enterprise level. Uh, before I dive uh, deep into it, I just want to showcase our safety devices portfolio. Uh, as you know, Rockwell is uh, the number one for our safety devices solution. And we, uh, apart from the guard, uh, guard logic PLCs, which is our safety controller, we also have uh, several of relays, safety relays. We have several other devices like light curtains, scanners, mats. Uh, we have other trip devices like cable poles, um, e-stops, as well as uh, with uh, safety switches like guard locking, interlocks, etc. So if you have any applications uh, where you do, uh, you know, use any of these kind of switches or any of these devices, please let us know. Um, we have a very good portfolio of it. So um, let me ask a quick question. How many of you have heard of uh, Connected Enterprise? Show of hands. Okay, that's a pretty good amount. So, um, so the Connected Enterprise is basically uh, Rockwell's uh, answer to industrial internet of things, where basically you're trying to connect the IT side of the business to the OT side. When I say the OT, that's the operational uh, operation technology side, which is more at the factory level as well as the device level. Um, Rockwell has focused a lot on, uh, you know, Rockwell is known for the enterprise level as well as at the operation level on the PLC side. So this first layer that you are seeing uh, where the design environment, the visualization, the PLC exists, Rockwell is very famous and well known for that. But what we realized uh, when we are embarking on this journey of connected enterprises, the PLC is the one that's consuming all these data. And these data are not being originated at the PLC, but they are being originated at the device levels. So the device levels could be your sensors, could be any input or output devices. So in order to make our entire system smarter, we needed to make those devices smarter as well, which means that not only does these devices at the machine level uh, does its job, but also gives you added diagnostics and added data to give you more information on what's going on at your system. Um, on this side, we are talking about the, sorry, we're gonna be focusing on our, so we, we embarked, we did our smart motor controls devices, we did our smart uh, sensing devices that we came out two, three years ago. Um, and now we are trying to make all our safety devices much more smarter. So when I talk about safety devices, as I mentioned, we have different kinds of safety devices. There are two ways of making those devices smarter. Basically, you put in some level of communications within the device so that the device can communicate to a higher level systems like your PLC. Now, there are two uh, ways of thought. You can either put an Ethernet IP chip in it. So an Ethernet IP, like any of our devices, would enable that device to actually communicate to a PLC or to another higher level system. And we do have that solution as well onto my left-hand side, if you see all these de designs. These are our SIP safety um, Ethernet IP devices that, that we already have Ethernet embedded on those devices. But what about other devices? For example, e-stops, uh, non-contact switches, guard locking switches, interlock. Ethernet IP is not the best viable solution because number one, Ethernet IP putting that makes it very expensive. Number two, uh, having Ethernet IP, it's a, it's a space challenge as well. And number three, because uh, these devices exist all throughout the plant, you don't want to be addressing MAC address to each and every of these devices. Hence, we 
decided to go another route. Instead of going Ethernet, our solution is GuardLink. Now what exactly GuardLink is, it's a proprietary protocol that allows us to enable all these lower level devices uh, connect to the higher level uh, processors uh, via this a protocol called the GuardLink, which is another safety protocol. So before I dive deep into what GuardLink uh, protocol exactly is, the technical definition, just wanna showcase a, a, a challenge or a use case scenario. So when you're running into a plant, you know, um, traditionally, most of the time when you are connecting a, a safety device, traditionally the customers try to use them in series. The reason is if you have a number of safety devices, you don't want to take up too many IO points and your relays or your safety controller. So what customer does is they connect everything and wire them in series. So what happens that is if something goes wrong or if any of those devices go down, you, because it's connected in series, you don't know exactly where it goes down, right? So in a typical situation where you have a huge line and you have multiple of these safety devices, if they're connected in series and say there is a machine downtime or any of the doors gets open where it breaks the contact and the device gets shut down, the amount of time, and this is a general process that goes to, through every plant. A machine goes down, you, you do a quick eye check to make sure you know, everything is up and running or not, and you see, okay, the doors look closed, but still the machine is down. Then you go into checking one by one. It's like following the bits. You go in and start checking each and every of these devices because it's all connected in series and there is no way to actually pin down. And then finally, you find which device or which part of the machine that, that actually is causing the shutdown, and then you actually go in to solve the problem. So the amount of time that it, the amount of time that it takes, you know, to, to actually start resolving the problem before you even identify the problem, it's almost like 76%. So that's a huge percentage of time that your machine is down. Um, the other day we were at one of the customers and they said any unplanned downtime for them can cost almost a million dollars per day, right? Joe and I, we had gone there and it was unbelievable. Like some of, you know, the oil and gas plants, as well as some of the other like steel plants and everything, the amount of downtime that any of your, you know, machine does, uh, it costs a huge amount of money. So the issue over here, again, as I mentioned, you know, um, there is increasing cost because over here, the diagnostics and the granularity is not there because now you're connecting everything in series, right? Uh, the other way to solve this problem is what customer does is instead of connecting in series, if they actually want to identify what exactly goes down to each devices, they connect each and every of those devices uniquely to one individual IO point, which means if you have 32 safety devices, you have to wire them back to a safety relay input. So now you're consuming 32 devices or 32 input points, which is added wiring cost, as well as it is, uh, it is, uh, it is added time for you as well. So what, what GuardLink does is, GuardLink is a, a single wire safety solution, which basically creates a, a trunk line using the smart taps. And I have the system over here as well in the, uh, in the demo box. So it allows customer to still connect all the devices in series, but also allows you to get a granular level of diagnostic information individually for those devices. So what GuardLink does is it connects, it connects all of these devices in series and then adds a trunk drop so that individual devices can be added thereby maintaining the, creating a bus, but also creating a trunk so that individual devices are added to that trunk. So here I have the architecture in my, um, in my demo box. As you can see, um, there's different, and I'll go into detail onto that. There are different parts of a guard link system. And one of the parts is your master, which is just like your safety relay. So this is a guard link master. It's right over here. And the other is the smart tap that basically has uh, one, one input and two outputs. So it allows you to then connect everything in series and then you can connect all the devices in that smart tap. 
So for each and every of this uh, GuardLink master, you can connect up to 32 devices. So instead of connecting one by one, now you can just have one GuardMaster relay and you can connect it to 32 different devices. Each of these trunk drops that I'm talking about, each of these trunk drops, it can go up to 30 meters in length. So if eventually from the starting point of a GuardMaster to your end uh, device, it can be almost a thousand meters that, that you can reach. And all of this is, you know, our highest rated machine safety rated uh, PLE and TUV certified as well. So this just showcases uh, the, the product uh, releases over here. So we have the smart taps, we have the GuardMaster relay, and this is how basically the architecture uh, goes through. Um, now, one of the things is that uh, a general conception is that if you are going to be using a safety relay or if you're going to be using a safety input and you want to see it on your controller, you have to use a guard logics controller. Now, that is true for you know, traditional devices. Uh, but if you're using a guard link, say you don't really want to spend your money on a safety uh, logics controller, but you still want to get the diagnostic information onto your HMI or on in your controller, you can use what we have the ethernet tap. It is a standard ethernet tap. And this ethernet tap basically connects to the guard master. So all your safety functions uh, that, that you need for your safety devices is being done at the master level over here. But then you have the ethernet tap that you can just connect to a standard controller. So when you connect to a standard controller, it then gets all the diagnostic information and thereby you get the total visibility of your system. So anytime a system goes down, you know exactly where it is going down and when it is going down. Any questions so far? So, um, if you're going, uh, if you're connecting to the guard master, so the, the question was, uh, how does it play with TUV? Do you get PLE rating or not? If you're connecting it uh, to the guard master, uh, you will get PLE rating. You will get the highest uh, safety rating, still three PLE rating. Uh, currently, there is no communication that uh, allows you to connect it directly to a SIP safety. Uh, right now, we don't have that. Uh, so that's why the best way is to use an Ethernet tap and then, because you're not getting any safety task in your controller. All the safety task is being taken care of at the master relay level. And all you're getting on the, on the controller side is your added diagnostics. Uh, the other advantage over here is, you know, a lot of the companies is now traditionally standardizing on the highest level of safety. So as you know, there are different performance level in safety. There is uh, PLA all the way up to PLE. A lot of times, you know, PLE is not required. Uh, many times you can have the best safety for your application and still be a PLC. Uh, PLD or a PLB rating. But the thing is that customers, uh, they like to have a PLE rating because that's like, a, you know, it's the highest rating and everybody's trying to standardize it. If you're using a non uh, guard link system and if you're having mechanical interlocks or any of these traditional devices, if you're wiring them in series, you will never be able to achieve a PLE rating because it's very difficult to achieve because if you imagine if you have a mechanical interlock and if that mechanical interlock shuts itself and it's wired in series, you can have a condition which is called the fault masking condition in safety terms. And that fault masking basically what it says is that you're masking, you're, you're noting one fault, but you're masking the fault of another device. So that will prevent you from going to the highest level uh, of uh, safety certification. But because in GuardLink, we have this trunk and there is individual drop to these devices, you know exactly which device, if it goes bad or if it gets open, you know exactly which device is on or off or it is connected. Thereby, it's going to give you that highest level of PLE rating. Although the device itself might not be PLE rating, the system will then become a PLE rated uh, system. Any questions?
Yes, sir. So, uh, so if, if this is, if you have these QIO points that need to be so brief, uh -huh. these points need to cause a shutdown of something else controlled by that controller. It's still, you still maintain the SIL rating? Correct. Even though it's not a guard controller? Correct. Because you also have the safety relay, right? All your safety task really is being uh, done by the safety relay. What, what uh, the Ethernet tap is doing is basically giving you diagnostic information at your controller level. Is that safety task in that master, uh -huh. does it own the 1756 IO module that is doing the shutdown? No, the, the, the safety relay is completely separate, right? So all you're getting to the, uh, to the controller is just the diagnostic information of the devices and the location. All the safety related task is done by, by the, the guard link master. It's just like having a GSR the relay. Contact that does the shutdown. Yeah, that will be performed here, not at, not at, at the Ethernet Where's uh, the controller. Device? Is it a guard link device? So the devices are traditional devices you are just having these uh, taps which are which enables it to be a guard link device and it it is done by this guard link master it's done in this relay okay so for the shutdown to maintain sil 3 do you have to have the red relay you have to have this relay yeah exactly no i mean the contact relay correct yes you you yeah it's over here it's all it's all so in there, this there's master. a physical dry contact on there yeah okay <laughs> so over here in the in the demo as you can see i have uh, multiple of these devices right the safety devices i have interlocks i have e-stops now e-stop is one of the biggest application uses where you might have multiple e-stops in different parts of your machine and say somebody is hitting your e-stop right there is no way of knowing who is hitting that e-stop so, but over here, if I hit the e stop, as you can see right now, everything is green. Hope every can, everyone can see that. All it's green, meaning that the trunk is alive, everything is shut, right? Now, if I switch on the e stop, if you notice over here, the the top and the bottom they're still blinking green, right? And the one in the middle that goes red, it still keeps the trunk alive meaning all of these devices are still operating and you, you, know, exa uh, you know exactly where this e-stop was pressed because all you're now looking for is this red. And this red node or, or this tap is one node, right? This node can then be identified on your HMI where you can then alias it or you can uh, write or have some descriptive command saying it's zone two, level one or whatever. So that helps it much, much, uh, helps you to identify that problem much easier. So you can also time it. So if you actually know John is pressing that, you know, you can just time it and you can make sure that that's not happening. So this just explains, uh, you know, the guard link master, um, um, the taps uh, going. One of the key things to note is that at the end of each, uh, at the end of the tap, so when you uh, actually have connected all your devices, the last tap is just like device net, you need to have a terminator. So you, you connect that terminator, so that basically signals this, this is the end of the tap. Uh, this is the, um, the fault masking condition, as I was telling you. Um, the PL ratings, these achievable PL rating that depends on um, the performance level, depends on the type of devices that you're doing, uh, the number number of the safety devices that you're actually using. There's a different uh, number of criteria that goes into that creates that PLE rating. Uh, one of the, again, the criteria as I was saying is, if you have uh, in series and you have uh, you know systems that get shut, you, you might, uh, there's this condition that will generate, which is the fault masking condition, which stops us from going to PLE. Uh, using individual diagnostic of these devices will then help you to overcome that and you'll still be able to get the PLE rating. Uh, this is an overview of, of, the, um, of the Ethernet tap. Um, now, and one thing to notice is that Ethernet tap to the guard master, uh, there is no wire that connects to the guard master. It's optically linked. So there is, uh, there is on, the side, uh, on the side of the Ethernet tap, 
Um, it's basically some IR uh, sensors. Uh, it's going and connecting it to the GuardMaster relay. So the system, uh, the way it works right now is for every Ethernet tap, you can actually connect up to six uh, GuardMaster relay. And for every GuardMaster relay, you can connect up to 32 devices. And every device can be 30 meters at the maximum length. So you can actually have, you know, three a uh, thousand meters from the first uh, relay to the last device, and you can have up to six of this per Ethernet tap. So it's a huge cost reduction, and without even taking it back to a safety PLC as well. Question. Yes, sir. I have this safety relay. Uh -huh. Actually, I have a motor start on the E3 motor. Yeah. And I am starting and stopping that motor start over Ethernet. Okay. And then I go ahead a, a safety relay, a safety switch, and I need that switch to stop that motor start, to stop that motor. I cannot do it over the network anymore. I have to do it. I have to hardwire that motor starter from that relay for it to be, um, uh, I guess, I mean, you can, you, in, so the thing is you can, you can do it, but the thing is that the, uh, the purpose of adding this is if you wanted a higher level of safety. So for example, if you're uh, directly connecting um, whatever that stop device to the motor, let's say that stop device uh, gets welded shut, or let's say, um, you know, you have multiple of these stop devices and you don't know what, exactly which one is being hit, right? So if you have them in series, then you will not be able to know exactly which one you're hitting. I guess my question is, is can I still control that motor over the Ethernet network, or does the safety switch have to be hardwired into the motor? Um, so for with this relay, um, if you're using this relay without the Ethernet IP card, then it has to be hardwired. But you, if you're using an E300 over Ethernet, you can still perform that action over the Ethernet. Uh, this goes into um, um, you know some of the details of, and we are coming up with newer GuardLink uh, GuardLink masters. Uh, this is the first uh, first uh, revision. Um, but uh, the main point is it has two safety circuits. You can connect uh, guard link. One of the things I want to mention is the devices itself, they're not special catalog numbers or anything. They are standard safety devices. What makes it guard link, again, I use the term enabling technology is this tap and this guard master relay. So you can connect any non uh, guard link. I mean, there's no, not, I mean, any traditional safety devices using this, um, smart tap to a guard master relay uh, in order to achieve that functionality. Uh, this is our first release. Uh, in our second release, what will happen is the chip that is inside these smart taps, so basically these are taps, and the chips inside these smart taps, we'll be implementing those chips uh, on the devices itself. So now you will be able to get more diagnostic information unique to that particular device. Uh, for example, if you want to monitor the health, if you want to monitor the temperature, the current rating of these devices, all of those information you'll be able to get. But that's uh, the next revision. Each one of these taps is like a PIO. Yeah, these are these are all inputs right now. They're, they're not outputs. How about the connection of uh, the e like a pre-made cable for? I mean, we. Uh, these are standard cables that we uh, get. We, we have custom lengths that you can buy, uh, but uh, these are five pin or eight pin cables um, that, that you can, I mean, all of these, some of these devices come with the pigtail version with the cables built in. Like for example, the connector will be something like this, right? So this is like an eight pin connector. Uh, and then you can just attach it based on the smart tap. The smart tap itself will have its, its male or female version of of uh, an eight pin or a five pin cable. But Rockwell does make, um, you know, we make custom lens or we have predefined lens as well, like two meter, three meters. You, you, we also have uh, 
like pigtails so you have leads coming out so on one side you'll have like an m12 connector and on the other side you'll just have leads coming out of the wire So no special cables required. The, the other part of it is that, say you're not using a controller, say you're just using the relay. Um, so you can also program the relay from, on the relay itself, we have different buttons and configuration buttons over here, depending and you know, depending on what type of configuration you want, depending on how many uh, in and out that you want, um, you can you can configure it as well. So this uh, showcase are uh, the taps. Uh, as I was telling you, we have the five five pin as well as the eight pin. Again, it depends on the devices itself. There are five pin devices. There are um, eight pin devices. Um, it 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 supports card link, uh, but also in the future we'll have dumb taps, which will it's not a smart tap because what it will do is once we have the chips inside the devices, this will just act like as a bridge to maintain the trunk. So all it will do is help you to uh, connect everything in series. But you'll have all those devices itself will be on on guard link. Um, this gives you the device layer. So this this is what you can get on the diagnostic. Uh, from the relay back to your controller. If you have the ethernet tab, it will give you the device location, it will give you the status information, and it's all auto mapped, it's all auto configured, so you don't have to set everything up. When you go into, uh, go in, uh, when you go into Studio 5000, uh, when you're adding this, as you can see, the, the ethernet uh, uh, card just goes into your controller, you open up Studio 5000, it's supported from V20 and above, uh, when you're in Studio 5000, uh, basically from your IO tree, you add this Ethernet tap. This is the 440R EN, EN2T tap. And when you add that tap, you then open up its own AOP. That's a 440 ETR tap. And we have, uh, it's not shown here, but what we have is this, this upload. When you click on this upload, um, you actually don't have to specify the taps itself or the number of tabs that you're connecting, you can just do uh, an auto search. So it will just go in and search all the devices that are connected and it will auto upload over here and thereby map, doing an auto map in your CIO tags as well. So it really is very simple, no additional configuration, no additional mapping or anything. Um, it gets that support. And we are also creating more faceplates as well as add-on instructions in order to take this onto your HMI with predefined faceplates. If, for example, if you want a faceplate with a, um, a locking door or some with an interlock, we are trying to do that as well. And that will also be available to you free on a sample code library. I've given some, I don't, um, will we be sharing uh, this present? So I've, I've used these slides because it's good to know, I've listed all the catalogs, but it goes into detail of if you have to order the system, what's the catalog, catalog numbers. Um, we did uh, uh, like a system comparison. Uh, so all this time we were talking about, you know, how to prevent unplanned downtime, uh, how to reduce troubleshooting times and easy programming. Uh, let's just talk a little bit on the total cost of ownership as well. And again, we did this comparison based on list prices. So, I mean, it might be different uh, when you're actually seeing, but these are all list prices. So, like I said, if you have to connect everything in normal TTAP connectors without any diagnostic, I mean, these TTAPs exist, right? If you have to connect it with TTAPs, TTAPs uh, in order to actually create a, like a series trunk, uh, what you don't get is you don't get PLE, um, you don't get any additional diagnostics. You can't, you can't actually take that into your controller. Um, so you don't get any diagnostics. Your hardware cost will somewhere around $1,800. We do have safety blocks. Now these safety blocks, you can distribute it. You can have the, some of those PLC outputs, but again, you don't get those individual diagnostics. Uh, for example, like these uh, diagnostics that you can only get is like the device identification at, at the safety blocks. And this is a bit more, uh, expensive going the distribution box uh, box route uh, 
Um, that costs about $2,800. And with the IOLink, as you can see, first of all, it's very neat and clean, but because you know, you're adding the taps one on top of the other, plus the devices itself does not cost anything because it's a standard uh, safety device. You get the device identification, you get the relay status, and that's a little bit more expensive as a first option, but it gives you much, much better uh, uh, results uh, when you talk about the entire system. Uh, we also in, uh, did like an efficiency, uh, again, for uh, some applications, you know, you're not getting down into milliseconds, but there are certain applications where, you know, every milliseconds count. If you're just using the taps for, you know, solid state out, uh, devices and say you have connected 10 devices to a relay, um, we did this calculation, the total response time from the last tap, uh, last device back to your safety relay is around 234 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. Um, but, you know, uh, with with guard link it ends up much faster because now you're you're not calculating from the last tab you're calculating from the first each of these individual safety uh, device tabs and it reduces to 59 milliseconds so message is it's also much faster it's cheaper um, uh, I shouldn't say cheaper it's cost effective right um, but um, but it also saves a lot of your uh, time in world program again I've included the you know um, catalog information. Uh, basically, there is a Guardmaster relay. If you want to get it on your standard controller, you add this Ethernet tap. Uh, these are the different safety, uh, the smart taps that we have. You need to have a terminator. A lot of people forget the terminator that causes signal issues. So you need to have the tap at the end uh, of um, at your at your last end tap. And then these are the different connection systems, like you asked for the div different cable systems that we have, different patch codes and cord sets. Um, and then we have the mounting brackets as well. That's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, thanks, Rob. Um, online guys. Oh, sorry, one Oops. question, Ned. Um, common applications, well, uh, number one, any application that you're using a number of e-stops, um, for example, so for example, in a conveyor system, uh, you might have a number of e-stops there. Um, this is a very good application for that. Uh, if you have machine guarding doors, so OEM packaging machines, you have e-stops, you have cable pulls, you have interlocks, you have number of different uh, devices. This is a very good application on that as well. I was going to say online uh, audience, feel free to um, chat in a question if you want, or you might be able to unmute your line as well and ask it live. Uh, just a quick, uh, I just also want to take this opportunity to also just introduce you to our new, uh, I don't know if you guys use safety light curtains, but we uh, launched the new safety light curtains. Um, this was about two months that we launched it. Uh, this also you can connect it to uh, guard link. We are also coming up with a SIP safety version of it. Now the, the, the best part of it is um, usually if you have a safety uh, light curtain, you have to order two different catalog numbers. One is for, so you're basically connecting like a transmitted beam. One is for a receiver and one is for an emitter. One emits the light and one receives the light and somebody is breaking the beam, which is an infrared beam. Um, you know, the machine stops, right? So you have to stock in two different catalog numbers. Uh, what we did was um, we took out those two uh, catalog numbers out and it's a single catalog number. So these sticks are actually dumb sticks. All it does is just sends out the lights from both of these sticks. What we did was the programming of these sticks are on these USB uh, devices. Um, it's not USB, it looks like a USB, but basically uh, this is kind of the brain uh, it's like a cloning device and then you can just plug it in and then this can operate as your transmitter or receiver. We also have a catalog number that does universal transmitter receiver, which we call as a transceiver. So we are focusing on reducing uh, your SKU. So the number of parts you're ordering, all you have to do is stock one of these um, and then you can have the settings are on the dip switch settings. So you can actually set them to actually operate as a transmitter or a receiver as well. Um, so yes, yes. Sorry. 
Uh, these are not Haslock rated, sorry. Do you have a Haslock uh, applications that you see uh, on these devices? Okay, because what we're trying to also do is get all these systems Haslock rated. So we're welcoming any you know business cases or applications that you guys have so that we can actually um, you know, ask the factory to make, make some of these Haslock rated. And when you say Haslock, is it? Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah, I get it. So, will that be class one div two then? Uh, um, it's usually div one in the home. Oh, div one. Yeah, any other questions you guys have? All right, well, um, we can go ahead and uh, shut down the, the web at the web audience, um, no questions I'll see, but feel free to uh, reach out to us at any time. Um, so Rob will be here to answer questions here in the room. So once again, thank you for uh, sure. coming and uh, doing our presentation for us. And thanks everyone for attending today. We'll go ahead Thanks, and everyone. Shut that down.